Hey, Tavis here. And for this video analysis, we're going to break down some of my best backside 360s and see what makes them work. As well, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you a few of my favorite training exercises you can do during this summer to help yourself get perfect backside 360s and really make them work a lot better for the season. Because that's the goal of this video, figure out what makes a perfect backside 360 and how to train it so we can go and bring that to our own riding. So we're going to start where you should start with any jump and that's the takeoff. So for the takeoff of the jump, you can see that I'm coming in super light heel pressure to toe pressure. A lighter setup carve will make it so you have less jagged and aggressive uh, momentum that you need to deal with. So this light transition is going to really help make it easier to control your edge because we want to do one thing here and that's keep as straight of a line as possible off the jump with keeping our upper body slightly open. We don't want to be breaking up the waist or breaking the spine. So you can see here that I'm keeping my upper body super tall and aligned, as well as keeping my knees nice and out, uh, not letting them come in together. This is going to go and set me up perfect to leave off the takeoff on my tail, giving me that extra ump and putting me on the right arc of a jump. What the right arc of a jump does is it really helps you go and activate your muscles to get a slow, consistent rotation because you don't need to make any slight adjustments. And that's actually what I'm doing here. For this jump, even though it looks like I'm just floating and cruising along, I'm actually flexing my core, my hips, every muscle in my body to help adjust that rotation because I technically didn't snap quite hard enough off the lip. But by going and tightening my muscles in my body, I'm able to speed up the rotation. This is only possible because I'm going and getting a nice arc off the jump so I can go and generate my energy to rotating instead of fighting to get back on access. The next thing I really want you to pay attention to that helps you go and activate your muscles is the spot. I'm going and as soon as I leave off the takeoff, my eyes are going right underneath my arm. This lets me go and spot the knuckle around 180, 90-ish. So we can see my eyes at 90 are all the way locked down on the knuckle. And I'll be holding the spot until I fly past the knuckle and come into the landing. So track my head here. Head's tracking, rotating the whole way through. Finishing with that stacked position. And the last part of what I'm doing here and focusing on in the air is activating my back arm, pulling it along. See how my arms are away from my body and my back arm's actively leading the rotation all the way into a fully rotated 360. This is why this is such a good backside 360 because I get a constant rotation throughout the full spin. And I don't need to make any adjustments and I land in a completely stacked position. I land as if I'm just riding and that's what you're aiming for. That backside free that will set you up where you don't need to move a muscle just like one of your ideal straight airs. And the last thing I want to note here is the snap timing. This is around a 15 foot jump so it doesn't take much power to get a backside 360. And that's also because you can utilize something called counter rotation to speed up a back free, what we'll be talking about in a little bit. But basically, I know that if I get a clean straight takeoff, don't drift, have my eyes lock on the knuckle, from this position, I'll be able to land this 360 no matter what. So that's what you're aiming for, to get into this position. Next, we're going to go and tackle a POV from Tosh. I'm not going to try to pronounce his last name, but if you don't follow him on Instagram, he makes great content, one of the rides to watch. And this is a backside 360 off of the biggest jump in Canada, Shaq Left. So this is about the cleanest and smoothest you'll ever see a backside 360 because it's a 70 foot jump. He has plenty of air time. So let's break down what works. First of all, look at his head position. Watch how long he's keeping his eyes at the end of the takeoff. He's basically watching the takeoff into his board starts to ride off. This patience is really important, especially once you start getting to bigger jumps. Because if you start looking away too soon, your board's going to start turning with you. So he's keeping his chest open, face off the takeoff, leaving off his tail. Super nice. And then watch this. His eyes move to under his shoulder and he spots the knuckle. Well, it looks like he spots the knuckle through the full rotation here. But ideally, you're seeing the landing right here. Eyes locked down onto the knuckle, coming all the way back up. And he's going to keep his eyes there for a rest of rotation. So see how his eyes are locked on that point and he's rotating around it. And he actually does something really interesting here to control his rotation. And this is one of the things that can make backside 360s much more approachable and much easier. So watch, watch his rotation. 
he's going to go and speed up his rotation slightly with his upper body right here. See how his upper body rotates a little bit faster. I'll play it back one time. So he's rotating slowly, sees the landing, and he sees, oh, I need to speed up my rotation a bit. So he lets his upper body rotate, and then he uses counter rotation to bring everything back aligned. That's what's causing his back arm to come forward like that. Whenever you use counter rotation, your arm is going to have to come the other way. Let me go and just demonstrate this quick. So whenever you see any of these snowboarders' arms coming back and getting around their body like this, or like this, that's because we're utilizing counter rotation. And what counter rotation is, is it's using your upper body to lead the spin and then letting your lower body catch up by bringing everything back aligned. And this is a great tool for controlling spins and finishing backside rotations that every rider really utilizes a lot. So that's exactly what Tosh is doing here. He's going and rotating the back free, spotting the landing, and as he sees the landing, then he uses counter rotation to control his spin, pulls it back, and that's why we see his back arm come back forward, giving him a super controlled, fluent backside 360. So that's why counter rotation is actually something great to utilize for backside spins. Next, we're going to break down a backside 360 off a little rail takeoff. I might get some hate for this in the comments, but if you're nice about it and you don't go on affecting anyone's riding, a rail takeoff is a great way to practice your back free. So let's go and tackle these principles here and see what makes this work and what uh, we can change about it because this is a really good back free, but it's not completely perfect and I'll show you why in a sec. So first of all, setup carve, coming light on the toes, opening the chest, keeping my eyes pointed at the takeoff as long as possible only having my eyes dip away as my rotation starts getting engaged. And then the one mistake here is you can see my boards super flattened out and I'm leaving off the takeoff a little bit early. It's not too big of a deal because this is on a rail takeoff so there isn't much consequence, but ideally you want your board to be leaving on the same arc of the takeoff because if you have your nose dipping down, it's going to throw off your axis rotation a little bit. On a small jump like this, not a big deal. But then you can see that I'm leading the rotation with my back arm the whole way through. And then I have to go and lead rotation with my upper body and then use counter rotation to bring everything back aligned. And you can see it right there with my arm coming back in front of me. So I'm going strong snap, rotating, but I actually don't snap the rotation hard enough. So I need to lead the rotation with my upper body and then play catch up with my legs. And this is what makes a backside 360 so much easier to control, is getting comfortable with leading the rotation of your upper body, so then you can always play catch up to make it smooth every time. So at the end of this video, I'm going to teach you how you can practice this at home. The last video we're going to look at is how I utilize these techniques while adding a grab into the spin. Because I recommend working on your back freeze without a grab, but eventually you're gonna to wanna to add a grab in there and the mute grab is generally the best for this because it lets you hit the grab and then pull with your back arm. It's also the grab you want to be using for your backside 720s, so getting comfortable with it on the back free is really nice. So let's just go and break down this whole backside 360. First of all, the setup carve. A little bit of chatter. Generally, you don't want chatter, so this is a little bit too aggressive, but then I go and transition through the spoon of the jump nice and calm, and I keep my eyes locked at the end. Then light edge pressure as I keep my eyes locked down, rotating. So as I leave the jump, I'm just slightly closed off. The bigger the jump, the less you'd want to be closed off leaving because the less rotation you need. And then the smaller the jump, the more you need to be leading. Because if we go and look at the back free off of this small jump, my upper body is leading completely 90. Where here, off of like a 10, 15 foot jump, my upper body is only slightly leaned. This was actually a little bit not enough rotation. What is why I needed to utilize the back arm pull and counter rotation of the landing. So let's go and break that down. I go spot at 90. So you can see my eyes at 90 degrees are looking for that knuckle. And as I'm looking for that knuckle, I'm also reaching down for the grab. That's the grab time you want to be aiming for, to go and fully finish your snap then bring everything up, start looking for your landing, and as you're hitting that spot, you're also hitting the grab. That will give you the most control over your backside 360s. 
Then I didn't go and put quite enough rotational force. So to make up for this, I pull with my back arm and use a little bit of counter rotation at the end. And that's why my upper body finishes like that. So the only reason why I'm able to go and pull and make these adjustments is because I'm getting that clean takeoff off the jump that's setting up on the right arc. Because it's really important to get that clean arc to, so you can spend your time in the air making these changes and adjustments to your rotation instead of your axis of rotation. So now I'm going to go and demonstrate a few things that I like to do to practice utilizing counter rotation on backside spins. The first is just going and finding the difference. So this is a constant rotation, what would be a perfect takeoff, where I go and wind up, snap, and my body lines completely stacked, no, no need to change anything. And the second is when I don't snap hard enough, I need to use counter rotation. So that looks like this. See how my landing with my upper body rotated like this. That's going to happen every time you go and finish a back free with counter rotation because you're going and pulling everything back in line. So if you ever see a snowboarder going and finishing a spin with their arms around their body, that's how you know they use counter rotation to help with the spin. The best way to train getting used to using counter rotation in your backside spins is take your snowboard stance, rotate 90, then rotate your upper body all the way back facing forward. Then just go and pop up and counter rotate back the 270. So 90 degrees, rotate the upper body, pop, counter rotate it back. This is just going to get you comfortable with that last motion because if you do a proper backside 360, you're going to extend, be 90, leading with your upper body, and then playing catch up. So that's a very exaggerated motion, but it's great to have the skill because it's going to help you control your spins and it's a very fast way to spin because you can just go 90 and get it around without too much hassle. Where if you're going and trying to do a full power, completely rotated spin, fully committed, it's going to be a lot harder to control and a lot harder to get consistent. So that's the end goal is one set rotation where you don't need to utilize any counter rotation or any change in axis. You can just go and float it and land. But it's really good to have the skills and the comfortability to go and be 90, lead with your upper body, pop up, counter rotate and finish with spin. That's a great way to get more comfortable with backside 360s because it can be scary trying to learn a back free, like, oh, I need to do this rotation, spin a full 360 in the air. But if you break it down to, okay, I do my land, my, I do my takeoff, I do my spot, I rotate it around. It makes it a lot easier to approach and also makes the motion seem a lot less complex. And that's what we're all about, try and break down this motion so you can go and utilize it to go and improve your riding and build up to bigger tricks. So just a recap, you want to have a nice strong upper body, opened chest to the takeoff, holding a light toe pressure as you ride off, closing the shoulder just a little bit while keeping your eyes at the end. As you snap off your tail, be slightly closed off, then look around, spotting the knuckle, around 90, and then if you need to speed up the spin, lead the rotation more if your upper body, or just keep it all tight and pulling with your back arm, finishing in that stacked position. That is how you do a perfect backside 360. Let me know if you like this video format. If you are also interested in video analysis, check out Addiction Plus. You can submit a video of your riding and we'll go and break it down with the same depth because it's really helpful to not just be told what mistakes to avoid, but to know what mistakes you're making or what good points you have in your spin. So you can join Addiction Plus, send us a video, and we'll break down your clip and help you go and master that trick and play the steps to go and move on to future tricks. Also, let me know if you like this video format. There's so many tricks that we can talk about in this way, and I think it's a great way to add more details that we can't cover in the Learn to Jump series. So let me know if this video format works for you. If you want it more detailed, if it's a little bit too long, they are just starting with this kind of content. So your opinions, your comments are really going to make a difference for how we choose to go and make this kind of stuff in the future. So let me know what you think. Let me know your opinions. And thank you for letting me improve your riding.